Over the last 12 months, I've seen a huge shift in what is working for our paid advertising campaigns at my agency. And at the end result is like, we're, we're not really running webinars anymore at all. And so what I wanna share with you in this video is why that's happened, uh, what's happened, why that's happened, and what we're doing instead. And that way you can be on top of it because I don't wanna say that webinars don't work or that you should never use them. Uh, that's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is what we've seen work from a paid advertising perspective has dramatically changed and it's changed very quickly. And so I wanna share with you like what's going on and why that's happened and uh, yeah, what you can do to kind of be on top of, of what's going on. So really quick, if you don't know me already, my name is Bryce and I run a advertising agency where we work with online businesses that sell digital courses, high ticket products, all of that stuff. And we handle a lot of their customer acquisition for them. So everything I'm sharing with you on this channel is just stuff that I've seen at my agency working with clients. I've been doing this for the last seven years now. So um, lots of experience in this space. You're just working with a lot of these types of businesses. And again, I'm just kind of sharing what I've seen work here on this channel. So let's get into it and like what happened with webinars and why are we not running them anymore? And actually, if you've, if you've been watching my channel at all, or you've seen some other videos, you've seen a bunch of videos that I've posted here about webinars because webinars worked extremely well for us for a really long time. So I would say like two years ago, 90% of our clients were running a automated evergreen webinar to a 997, you know, a course that sold anywhere for like 500 to $2,000 was probably the price range that we ran in. And that was like 90% of the campaigns that we ran for years. And it's been really surprising and like a really dramatically quick change to see that a lot of those campaigns have just stopped working. And we don't run any of those right now at the agency. And, and I'll tell you exactly what we're doing here in a second. But what I think has, and, like, and again, everything I'm sharing with you here is like, one, my experience at the agency, two, I just have a lot of friends in this space because I've been in it for a while, and three, I'm a part of some like pretty, you know, pretty good masterminds where a lot of people are also doing similar things. And so this has been my experience uh, at the agency and also across the board with everyone that I speak with, right? Which is like the pretty traditional, traditional, you know, the webinar that was working, right? Which was like, have a evergreen webinar, meaning it's available all the time. It's either on demand or the next one starts in 15 minutes or choose your time. There's a few times over the next couple of days or whatever it is. Uh, a lot of people are running those straight to some kind of like 60 to 90 minute presentation. And that was like your pretty webinar, you know, your standard webinar stuff. There were lots of different styles. Probably the most popular one that just like blew up the internet was like the Russell Brunson expert secret style webinar. And then that was going to a sales page where people could just check out and buy, you know, a $500 to $2,000 product. And again, that crushed for a really long time. Uh, we had campaigns that were doing like three, 400K a month uh, in sales from that type of webinar at one point. Like it was nuts. And like, uh, honestly, I've, I've, a lot of those businesses have just stopped running those types of webinars. And one like little side note, um, Check the time for when you're watching this video because uh, one of the kind of the challenges with you know being online in general is like you know we make content it goes out and that's kind of the best information that we have at the time but then these things change really quickly so if you're reading some old articles that are telling you webinars are crushing it you got to start your own webinar you know you just picked up expert secrets for the first time and this is like new info for you um, then you know like depending on the market that you're in that, that might not be the most recent uh, relevant information what I'm sharing with you here is just like what I know right now as of the time of this recording based on everything that I'm looking at uh, with our accounts and with our clients and, and in this space. But basically here's what I suspect happened with this type of funnel was I think the internet just got smashed with this type of funnel. So, you know, there was a time when getting a webinar set up and all of these things was, was not easy, right? You needed to have developers and tech skills. You need to be really good at, at setting these kinds of things up. So there were much less of them. And so running a webinar to like running ads to a webinar, uh, was just not as common. And then, you know, platforms like ClickFunnels came out, books like Expert Secrets came out, all of these webinar, you know, experts and gurus came out and they started teaching everybody how to do this stuff. And it just smashed the internet with these types of offers. And so if you were ever in the like, make money online, trying to start an online business, uh, being a coach, a consultant, a service provider, learning a new skill, anything like that, you've seen these types of webinars and everyone's gotten, had the experience of like showing up to this webinar where you're promised, you know, the four steps to whatever, 
and it's like a story and a pitch fest and you actually learn nothing and then they just try to sell you something at the end. And even too, like, you know, the big book that came out that was, you know, trying to teach everyone how to run webinars, like literally told you like, hey, don't teach people stuff on the webinar, you know, like teach them things, but don't tell them how to do stuff, you know, like teach them ideas and blah, 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 whatever. So we all got tired of it and we all got smashed with it. And so I think depending on what market you're in, uh, most people have just been inundated with these types of funnels. And for that reason, I think they've stopped becoming very effective. If you're one of the first people who had one of these style of funnels in a particular market, uh, you probably did really well. I mean, we had clients that were doing like two, three hundred thousand dollars a month in sales from these webinars. I had friends that were doing like two hundred thousand dollars a month in sales from these webinars. Like it was it, the, the numbers that they were putting out were really, really impressive. Uh, but again, very quickly, 15 other people showed up doing a very similar webinar. And I think people just got inundated with these types of things. And so what happened is like show up rates got less. It got really expensive to get people to show up to these things. Advertising costs went up because a lot of people started advertising. And so they just became way, way less effective. And, and what that looked like for us was, you know, we had clients where we had a thousand dollar product and we were paying 300 bucks to get a customer. And then eventually we were paying 400 bucks to get a customer. And then eventually we were paying 600 bucks to get a customer. And then eventually we were paying 650 bucks to get a customer. So we had to raise the price on the course. And then what happened is we started paying, you know, 800 bucks to get a $1,500 customer. And the CPA just kept going up and, and we just kept trying to chase it. If you are super great with webinars or you're such a great pitcher, you're so experienced with this, especially like if you're not going cold traffic, you got a warm audience and all of this stuff, all of these things might be different, right? But this, from my experience, what I saw was a lot of people who weren't experts at webinars who were able to get these things set up and start to get them working. Once the competition just got higher and higher and people became less inclined to show up to these things, show up rates just went down, conversion rates went down, the cost to acquire customer just went skyrocketing up and they just became less and less profitable. Another really good friend of mine in, in this market who had like a, a really solid make money online offer for a few years that was crushing it with a webinar, uh, they're like super marketing savvy people. So, you know, they test everything, webinars, sales pages, the split test, all of the things. And they just hit a point in their business where like, they just couldn't get people to convert from a webinar to a sales page, no matter how hard they tried. And at one point they were doing over $200,000 a month with the same funnel and it just stopped working. And so they had to find a different way to do it. And that's what a lot of my clients had to do as well. It's like we had to find a different way to still get new customers coming in through paid ads with this webinar funnel was just saturated and no longer working, which leads me to what has been working. And what has been working are still doing video style presentation funnels. But uh, what I see a lot of people doing is they're on demand. So people are moving away from a lot of the like, gimmicky, you know, like, hey, the next one's available in 15 minutes. No one's faking it to be live anymore. It's just like an opt-in, go watch a video presentation right now. I've seen some companies that do like a 24 hour access. So they do like restrict the access to people, but a lot of people, it's just like a normal opt-in, you know, you opt-in and then you get to go watch a video. And then that video presentation is dramatically shorter. So we're talking about presentations that used to be 60 to 90 minutes. I'm now seeing presentations uh, that we're running where that are anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes max. And so that full blown webinar has now become like a tightly compressed VSL. And there's a lot of really smart people teaching how to, how to do these online. So I think the first time I heard about this was from Joel Irway and his like mini webinar format. Um, another guy that I've been learning from about how they're doing this right now is Cole Gordon and his team because they've really compressed their, their VSLs, their video sales letters down to like nine, 10 minutes. I think the shortest one we're running right now is like a 13 minute VSL. Like they're short, compact and compressed. And the reason why is because if you're in like a B2B space, you have like a make money online offer, you're dealing with anyone that has any level of sophistication, people just kind of want you to like, you know, cut, cut the bullshit and just get straight to the point. And that's working really well. Now, if someone just watched a 13 minute video presentation, they're probably not going to go to sales pages, pay you 2000 bucks. So where these VSLs lead to are sales teams. So once somebody opts in, goes through the VSL, then they're booking on the sales team. And that's where I see a huge shift has been going to is a lot of the companies that we work with. And a lot of my friends in the space have gone from running evergreen webinars to now building sales teams. And then they just have VSL call funnels that are running people to the sales team. And that's that's what's been really 
effective and that's what's working really well. What I actually really like about these and one of the big advantages that I've seen with this is like these VSLs are way easier to create and to test so you can iterate much quicker uh, because if you've ever done a webinar or you're familiar with that style of uh, getting those things done, if you've never done one before, it can take a lot of work to get a 60 or 90 minute webinar done and done correctly. And one of the challenges that a lot of people ran into was, you know, you do a 60 minute webinar, you do the whole thing and you either get people that buy or they don't, but then you're not really sure like, well, was it the webinar? Was it the follow-up? You can kind of see where people fell off in the webinar, but you're not really getting the greatest feedback. Um, and so what a lot of people resorted to is just doing a live webinar a bunch of times and then trying to get feedback and improve and improve and improve before they set it evergreen. Now with these VSLs, what you can do is you can shoot a short VSL, 10, 15 minutes. And then what you're doing is you're getting people, your, your ask is, hey, jump on a call with us and let's talk about this opportunity. On that call, you're getting so much valuable information about what was it that this person heard that stood out to them? What are their objections? What questions do they still have? All of these things. And then you can use that to go iterate and build the next one, which it's only 10 or 15 minutes long. So it's only going to take you, you know, a little bit of time to actually record and edit a new VSL versus doing a full blown webinar. There's also a lot of other really good pros when it comes to selling through a sales team because if you are getting someone on the phone, you are now able to adjust your pitch based on what they need. You can also, again, get a lot of feedback about like what stood out to them, what type of person is the ones that are actually booking calls, um, what did they hear that made them interested in booking a call with you guys, and then what are their objections and the questions that they still have before moving forward so that you can build all of that into your, you know, your front-end marketing and your follow-up. You also have more control over the follow-up because you know who to follow up with and you know who was so interested that they actually booked a call and you know exactly why they didn't want to move forward. The last one being you can actually have a lot more control with like your, a lot of people are using outbound setters in this process. So now when someone opts into a VSL, you get their phone number and email, and then you can actually just reach out to them because you've got a, now a human powered sales team and you've already got that built out. And so part of that process can just be reaching out to people who have signed up for this VSL and just seeing, you know, seeing if they're a good fit and seeing if you can just move them towards a sales call with the sales team, whether they consumed all of the VSL or not. So in the end, I'm seeing this being really effective for the teams that we're working with. And again, we've got clients that are doing six figures a month who are now using this same process where it's like opt-in, short VSL, sales team, is actually closing high ticket sales. And we're closing like 3K sales all the way up to 7K sales, just straight up with paid traffic and this type of funnel. So I think there are a lot of pros to moving into this type of model, especially if you're trying to get started with an online business. I think just going VSL call funnel to a high ticket sale is a really great way to do it. So there are definitely some cons if you're the type of person who is hoping to like, you know, set something up and just make internet money and, you know, like get sales rolling in, like that's become much more challenging. But I think the biggest reason for that is like, the market has just become very saturated with opportunities. And, and so people are just not really forking out their credit cards for these large purchases anymore because uh, a lot of, you know, if you're getting started in the online services coaching space, you're definitely not the first one anymore. That, that, that ship has sailed. Now you're dealing with a very, a much more, a more sophisticated market. Another thing too, that I think is just like one of the big lessons here. And this is something I've seen after doing this for many years is like, this happens all the time with everything in marketing is something comes out, you know, it's super hot for a while. The people that jump on it first typically, you know, have the best results with it. And then marketers just come in and saturate a ton of it. And so what's working moves very quickly. And I, it seems to be moving quicker these days around like, you know, when a trend takes off or something really starts working, everybody's going to jump on it. Everyone's going to smash the gas pedal as much as they can. And the market, you know, going to extract, market's going to extract as much as they can out of it until it stops working. And then they'll move to the next thing because there's always a next thing. Right. And I think if you're newer at this, if you're trying to figure this stuff out, it's really advantageous to figure out how to stay on top of what's really working in these time, like as these time goes on, because, um, if you're watching, you know, old YouTube videos, reading old blog posts, of course, there are some fundamentals that stay the same. But um, what really works in the, you know, from being in it changes quite quickly. And so for me, like being a part of masterminds and having a lot of good friends in the industry and staying connected with what people like people in my space has always been one of the best ways to really keep up with what's working. And then also to just investing a lot of time and resources to make sure that you're just able to stay in touch with what's going on. Because I think these sales powered 
sales team powered sales will probably stick around for a while because it, it also just goes back to, you know, something that's worked for forever, which is just human powered sales. But I'm sure the method in which you use to get people on the phone and applications, all of that stuff will continue to evolve and people will find better ways to do it. And then they'll kind of keep it a secret for a while while it's working and then it'll get out and then everyone will start doing it. And then, you know, that'll work for a while until the next thing happens. So that's a really good lesson. I think overall with, with how this is tr uh, progressed. Another thing too is like, this is definitely not the only thing that is working right now. This is just my experience, but my experience comes very heavily from running paid ads, mostly working with online businesses that sell high ticket offers. And most of them are probably in like the, you know, one to $10 million range size. You know, if you are using organic traffic as your main traffic source, because you're really good at social media or whatever that is, uh, things are going to be different for you. Low ticket offers I see working really well for people, uh, mo especially on Facebook is like people running low ticket self liquidating offers. Um, but that's a different strategy and a different thing. And that has other challenges and other complexities, other pros and cons, right? So again, just sharing what I see working here. That's the great thing about this industry. You know, it always keeps us on our toes. It's always changing. It's always evolving. Uh, so it's never boring. There's always good stuff to keep up with. The one last thing I would say is, well, one, if you like this video, if you could hit that like button and subscribe, that would be awesome because uh, I try to make, you know, more videos like this, just sharing what we see working and, and also giving you guys insight on that. And then uh, if you actually want to see a full breakdown of this funnel, uh, what I have is I have a video where I actually break down exactly what this funnel is, how they're set up, getting more into like the tech and the specifics of how all that works. And so I'm pretty sure that is going to be on this side of the screen, I think, or maybe this side of the screen, one of these sides. Uh, but if you just click on the link right after this video, uh, you can check out the full breakdown on that funnel. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.